<laughs> okay, so today we're going to talk about grammar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, you have uh, any particular questions? You've been studying, I, just to maybe explain that you've been looking at these grammar books that I found at home. Mm -hmm. And I, I find grammar is quite interesting when you are at a certain level in the language because then it becomes really meaningful and you see things that you're already aware, uh, aware of. It's kind of uh, like taking stock of what you have. You've gone out and you've gathered up a lot of the language and words and phrases and then you, then you look in the grammar book and you see what you have and, and you see some explanations. It's quite, quite interesting. So, but maybe you have some questions. Tom? I've got the question. Uh, yeah. I just uh, read these books. I really right. did. Oh, a lot of them. But uh, I found a contradiction. That's good. We like <laughs> I like I contradictions. Discuss. And of course, I may not know the answer. But if I started with this book, it would be impossible to understand. But it, now that I'm at uh, quite a decent level, mm -hmm. it's really helpful. I found it uh, uh, much easier to to learn grammar now because I've got a, a solid foundation and I've got a, an idea about the language and how it works and I've got questions now, I've got problems to solve and it's easier to relate to that topic now rather than uh, when I started I had no idea, like, uh, how can you... I mean, you're not a r robot, like, you cannot learn the language, uh, the, the grammar, and then build the vocabulary and the language. So now it's much better. Here it says that due to is equal, equivalent to because of. Right. But here mm -hmm. it says that, um, okay, so cult... <laughs> Use because of or owing to rather than due to in a preposition or construction. So due to illness, mm -hmm. he was unable to make the, the, the trip. It mm -hmm. says the book says that it's it's not the best uh, because uh, it's a preposition or construction. So you want a prepositional construction, like no. normally I think of due to the fact that. I was tired. You wouldn't say due to my weariness. Uh, due to the many problems, yeah, yeah. Due to the many because of the many problems I had. Due to the many owing to the f owing. You'd have to see the context. Uh, uh, what are they saying? You use due to his with a prepositional clause. So his absence was due to illness. It's correct. Yeah. Yes, but uh, with uh, but as. Uh, in a prepositional construction, due to illness, he was unable to make the trip. Uh, the book says it's not the best. Way yeah, I would agree with that. We tend that sounds good. So you basically say what you were unable or able to do, and then you put the due to yes second yes, exactly. Yeah. While this book says this, the other book says that uh, the because of and due to is the same. But you know what? I bet you that if you went and said, okay, due to illness, put that in Google. So yeah, probably they use it. You'd find lots of them where they say, due to illness. But it, it's like, you know, for, for example, a lot of books will tell you, don't start a sentence with however. Mm. Yet, everybody uses it. Everybody uses it. You, instead, of, instead of saying like, however, comma, the problem was that I couldn't do this and that, you're supposed to say, the problem was however, Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I think that's one of those. If 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 you totally ignored that rule, mm -hmm. it wouldn't bother anyone, because after all, grammar is supposed to. It, grammar, in my opinion, mm -hmm. all grammar does is explain the most common usage. Grammar is not some rules like the Ten Commandments that have been received from God and this is how you shall speak, right? It's not. Grammar just describes common usage. Common usage changes because the English spoken today is very different from the English spoken 500 years ago. So as usage changes, the grammar has to change. Well, sometimes I don't know how to use while and why. While and? Uh, while and when. 
when and why. Okay. Sometimes I read the articles and I found um, people use uh, when and why quite often. But uh, well, at first I think the I thought the the situation are uh, pretty similar, so I couldn't distinguish the difference. And then I go back to check the grammar rules that can it can help me. Again, while really has the sense of you're in the middle of doing it. So while I'm learning languages, I make sure that the radio isn't on. Whereas you say when I'm learning languages or when I study languages, it's it's sort of sort of a longer period of time. Like, you know, this summer I was studying English. So so when in the sense of, of a longer period of time, but while is, is very specific to oh. while you're doing it. It's, it's very difficult to explain, but uh, I'm just thinking in terms of Chinese. In Chinese it's the when is the sure hole, right? Zai wo shang shao shou. Whereas while wo zheng zai shang wo shang wo shou. That's the while. <laughs> okay, that's kind of the, the difference. Ah oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After I read that, read that grammar books. Still, it's hard to use it right away in correct way because I cannot remember all, all those grammar rules, and it's hard to do that. <laughs> I'm reading. Um, it's. I I think I understand, but when I try to use it, I cannot think about this right. Right away. I mean, away. I, I must say that I'm the same. Like uh -huh. that's why I say the smaller the grammar book, the better. Right. And the other, it's interesting that that's those were the only two. Rather, and I would say they're rather. I wouldn't say they're obscure, but not crucial points of grammar. Biggest problems in grammar are the simplest issues: third person singular of the present tense, leaving off the s. For people who, where their own language doesn't have plurals, the s in plurals. Uh, some of the tenses. You know, if you, you someone should come out with a book. The only five rules you need to know. If you get these rules, you know the Pareto principle? Yeah. All right. In other words, you get 80% of the benefit from 20% of the, say, rules. So of all the rules that are in that book, there's probably a small number that are very important that you should know that will make your English sound very natural and fine. And all the other rules you can forget about because it won't have that big an impact. And you, basically, you, you, the three of you have those rules down naturally, with the exception of the, the things we did the other day, like the I would have had or I have had, and then the third person singular, uh, <gasps> present tense. There's just a few things like that. That's all. Hey, guys. Um, I'm a bit lazy today, so I'm doing this uh, while sitting. So. You can win this uh, perfect uh, t-shirt again and the lucky one this week is uh, Elad from Twitter. So congratulations, you are the lucky one this week and thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing, keep it up.